ಶಿಲ್ಪವಿಷ್ಣು ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾರಶತರಶತ ಶಿಶ್ಮಾರ್ ಭಕ್ತಿಗ್ರಂಥ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಶಿಲ ಗುರುದೇವ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶಿಲ್ಪವಿಷ್ಣು ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾರಶತರಶತ ಶಿಶ್ಮಾರ್ ಶಿಲ ಭಕ್ತಿಗ್ರಂಥ ಬಾಮನ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶಿಲ್ಪವಿಷ್ಣು ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾರಶತರಶತ ಶಿಶ್ಮಾರ್ ಭಕ್ತಿಗ್ರಂಥ ಬಾಮನ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಯಿ ಭಕ್ತಿಗ್ರಂಥ ಸ್ವಾಯಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಶಿಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾರ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ನಿಥಿಲ್ಪವಿಷ್ಣು ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾರಶತರಶತ ಶಿಶ್ಮಾರ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾನ್ ಕೇಶವ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಯಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ನಿಥಿಲ್ಪವಿಷ್ಣು ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾರಶತರಶತ ಶಿಶ್ಮಾರ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಯಿ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾರ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ನಿಥಿಲ್ಪವಿಷ್ಣು ಮಹಾಭಾಗವತ್ ಶಿಲ ಗೋಕ್ಷರ ಸ್ಬಾಬಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ನಿಥಿಲ್ಪವಿಷ್ಣು ಶಿಲ ಸಚ್ಚರಂದ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿನೋದ್ ಠಾಕೂರ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ನಿಥಿಲ್ಪವಿಷ್ಣು ವೈಷ್ಣವ ಸಾರ್ವಭೌಮ ಶಿಲ ರಘುನಾಥ ಸ್ಬಾಬಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರೂಪನು ಗೌರಿಯ ಗುರು ವಾರ್ಗ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರೂಪ ಸನಾತನ್ ಭಟ್ಟ ರಘುನಾಥ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಜೀವ ಗೋಪಾಲ್ ಭತ್ತಾಶ್ ರಘುನಾಥ್ ಶಾರ್ಡ್ ಗೋಸಾಯಿ ಪ್ರಭು ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಸ್ವರೂಪ್ ದಾಮದಾರ್ ರಾಯ ರಾಮನಂದಾರಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೋಪಾಲ್ ಶಾದ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ನಾಮ ಚೈಶ್ಲ ಹೈದಾಸ್ ಠಾಕೂರ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಪ್ರೇಮ್ ಸೇ ಕಹೋ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಆದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸರಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ಮಂಡಲ ಗೌರ ಮಂಡಲ ವ್ರಜ ಮಂಡಲ ಮಥುರ ವೃಂದಾವನ್ ಧಾಮ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಸಾರ್ವ ಅಭಿಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರಾಥ ಗಿರಿರಾಜ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕುಂದ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಕುನ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಯಮುನ ದೇವಿ ಗಂಗ ದೇವಿ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ತುಳಸಿ ಮಹಾರಾಣಿ ವೃಂದ ದೇವಿ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಕ್ತಿ ದೇವಿ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾಸಿ ಯೋಗ ಮಾಯ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೋಪೇಶ್ವರ್ ಮಹಾದೇವ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಹರಿನಾಮ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಅನಂತ ಕೋಟಿ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜನ್ಮಾಷ್ಟಮಿ ತಿಥಿ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಬ್ರಜೇಂದ್ರನಂದನ್ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಸುಂದರ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚಂದ್ರ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ನಂದ ಬಾಬಾ ಯಶೋಧ ಮಾಯಾ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ದೇವಕಿ ವಾಸುದೇವ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ದಾವ್ ಬಾಯಾ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವೃಷಭಾನು ನಂದಿನಿ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ರಾಧ ಠಾಕುರಾಣಿ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ರಾಧ ಠಾಕುರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ರಾಧ ಠಾಕುರಾಣಿ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಸಾಯ್ ಸಾರ್ವಜವಾಸಿ ಗನ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಹರಿನಾಮ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜನ್ಮಾಷ್ಟಮಿ ತಿಥಿ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ತಿಥಿ ಪಾಲನ್ ಕರಿ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಹರಿನಾಮ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಅನಂತ ಕೋಟಿ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀನಿತಾಯ ಗೌರ್ ಪ್ರೇಮಾನಂದ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಗೋ ಧನ್ಯವಾದ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ ಹರಿ ಗೋ ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಾಂದಸ್ಯಾಂಜನಾಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಲ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೆ ನಮಃ ನಮೋ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾಧಾಯ ಪ್ರಿಯಾತ್ಮನೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀಮಾರ್ಭಕ್ತಿವೇದಾಂತನಾರಾಯಣತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮೋ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾಧಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮಾತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ವಾಂಚಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮನೆ ಗೌರತ್ವಿಷೇ ನಮಃ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನ ಬಾಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೀ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಗುರುವೇ ಗೌರಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ರಾಧಿಕಾಯ ದಾಲಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭಕ್ತ ತರ್ಭಕ್ತ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಯಂ ಪ್ರವ್ರಜಂತಮನುಪೇತಮೇತಕೃತ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೈಪಾಯನೋ ವಿರಹ ಕಾತರ ಆಜುಹಾವ ಪುತ್ರೇ
Punya Shavana Kirtana Hridanta Stahya Badrani Vidhunoti Surit Satam Nashta Prayesh Pavadreshu Nitang Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavatutama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki Tavai Vasmi Tavai Vasmi Najivami Tvaya Vina Eti Vigaya Radhe Tvang Naya Mang Charanantikam Bhaktya Vihina Aparada Lakshay Shiptashtaka Maditaranga Madhe Kripa Maitvam Sharanam Prapana Rinde Namaste Charana Ravindam Bhajashi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Haribo Madhavi Didi, Raseshwari Mataji, Indira Mataji, Nri Hari Prabhu, and Bhavatarani Mataji. Dandavat Pranams, everybody. Happy Janmashtami. <laughs> Jai. And Yashoda Didi, Dandavat Pranams. So I didn't... Um, <laughs> today's been a bit of a rush. I actually just posted... A couple things. Um, well, this morning I posted something for John Mashtami on Vine of Devotion, and I didn't get around to preparing anything for today. So, um, of what to read. So, I want to finish Light of the Bhagavat, of course, and then I was just going to go to purebhakti.com and find something there. Um, but if anybody has any recommendations, let me know. And then my plan for the rest of the day is to either read through Dhammadarashtakam or Venu Geet. The next chapter we're reading in Srimad Bhagavatam is Venu Geet. It's chapter 21. And we happen to be publishing that book right now. And, and Anita, Anita Didi just sent me a message saying, we need Venu Geet ready now. Like that should be the top priority. So it's kind of neat that Venu Geet coincided with where we are in Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 21. So yeah, I probably should read through Venu Geet, but I also kind of want to read through Dhammarashtakam. So Anyhow, let's just finish off this light of the Bhagavat, and then we will... Oh, and I'll show you what I posted on Vine of Devotion. See, so just this morning I posted this last Janmashtami discourse, the class that Gurudev gave on Janmashtami in Raman Bihari Goryamat, 2010. He finished the class at 8 o'clock, so this must be when he was finishing the class. See, the clock says 8 o'clock. <laughs> um, yeah, and this was published in Rays of the Harmonists, 2011. So there's this, and then, and then I also posted um, on Vine of Devotion. I posted this yesterday, last night. Eleven causes for Krishna's descent, and this is from Secret Truths of the Bhagavatam, and. I found the original class that where Gurudev spoke this kata. And then I kind of, I just, I hi highlighted, sorry, I bold made, I bolded the prominent parts so that you could easily see what all the, all the different causes that Gurudev speaks about are. And I, I numbered them also. So one, Prithivi, um, Mother Earth in the form of a cow, along with the demigods, went to Brahma. And she said, please save me and my husband, Dharma. Then Brahma became worried and went with Prithvi, uh, sorry, Prithvi to uh, and the demigods to the ocean of milk. And he prayed, and then in his chants, like that. I just kind of, just so you can breeze through and get all the main points. So maybe we can go through that. And then, yeah. All right, so let's start with 
light of the Bhagavad. We just have a few verses left. So we ended with this yesterday. At night in autumn, the atmosphere is pleasant because it is neither very hot nor very cold. The mild wind blowing through the gardens of fruits and flowers in Vrindavan appeared very much pleasing to all, all but the gopis, who are always overtaken by heartfelt sorrow in the absence of Krishna. In the autumn season, all the birds... Oh, this is from Srimad Bhagavatam, Chapter 20. Srila Prabhupada's... Um, yeah, I think everybody knows what this book is by now. So. In the autumn season, all the birds, beasts, and men become sexually disposed, and the bull, the stag, the male bird, the man, and the other male creatures forcibly impregnate the fair sex. A similar impregnation... Yeah, a similar impregnation takes place as a result of devotional service to the Lord. Hmm, interesting. Let's find out what this is all about. Similar impregnation takes place as a result of devotional service to the Lord. Uh, so beautiful how, how she does water also. Look at that. <laughs> Okay. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Devotional service to the Lord never goes in vain. Just at the right moment, the result of one's particular devotional service will come, even if one has no desire for it. The pure devotees do not wish the pure devotees do not wish any return from the Lord in exchange for their service. They do, not make a, they do not make business exchanges with the Lord. But the Lord, of his own accord, fulfills all the desires of his devotees. It may appear that the devotee of the Lord is becoming poorer and poorer in terms of material prosperity, but factually he is not. The typical example is the Pandavas. The five brothers, headed by King Yudhishthir, underwent all sorts of difficulties because of the conspiracy of their cousins, headed by Duryodhan. But in the long run, King Yudhishthir was enthroned by Lord Sri Krishna, and his enemies were vanquished. King Yudhishthir was never disturbed by all the calamities that overcame them, even though Lord Krishna was was even though Lord Krishna was ever their companion. I don't get that right. Yudhishthir was never disturbed by all the calamities that overcame them, even though Lord Krishna was ever their companion. Anyways. The Pandavas never prayed to the the Pandavas never prayed to the Lord for anything but his devotional service. And in due course, sorry, in due time, everything came out in favor of the devotees. A devotee, therefore, should execute his devotional services with full energy, endurance, and confidence. He should perform with uh, yeah. He should perform his scheduled duties. He should be pure in heart, and he should serve in association with devotees. All six of these items will lead the devotee to the path of success. Hmm. What are the six things? He should execute his, devo his devotional services with full energy, endurance, and confidence. He should perform his scheduled duties. He should be pure in heart. He should serve in association with devotees. I see... Oh, I guess endurance and confidence are their own things. Okay, then at six. All six of these items, all six of these items will lead the devotee to the path of success. One should not be discouraged in the discharge of devotional service. Failures may not be detrimental. They may they may be the pillars of success. One must have good faith in the regulative principles followed by the self-realized souls. And one should not be doubtful about the ultimate result of such service, of such devotional service. Rather, one must go on executing his prescribed duties without hesitation. And one should never be influenced by one unwanted association. 
We should not consider going back to Godhead a plaything. We must take it seriously as enjoined in the scriptures. For a strict follower, the result is, is sure and certain. And when the time is right, the result will come of its own force. Dhruva Maharaj went to worship God to gain something. But when he actually came in contact with God, he did not want anything from the Lord. The Lord, however, awarded Dhruva Maharaj both benefits. That is, the Lord fulfilled his desires and also gave him eternal salvation. Such are the lessons we learn from all the revealed scriptures. The Almighty God awards the results we desire, and therefore we should desire that which is eternal, blissful, and full of knowledge. In devotional service, we should not endeavor for that which is temporary and useless. Forty-four. In the autumn season, all the reservoirs of water are full of lotus flowers. There are also flowers that resemble the lotus, but are of a different class. Among them is a flower called the kumud. When the sun rises, all the flowers but the kumud blossom beautifully. Similarly, lotus-like men take pleasure in the advent of a responsible king, but men who are like the kumud do not like the existence of a king. Hmm, interesting. Once again, Haribo, Prajumna Prabhu, and Mantra Murti Mataji. <laughs> In this age of Kali, the people want their own government because the kings have become corrupt. Formerly, it was not like that. The sons of kings were trained under the guidance of a good Brahmanacharya, just as the Pandavas and the Kauravas were put under the instruction of the qualified Brahman professor, Sri Dronacharya. Princes were rigidly trained in politics, economics, the military arts, ethics, and morality, the sciences, and above all, devotional service to the Lord. Only after such good training were the princes allowed to be enthroned. When such a prince became king, then too he was guided by the advice of the good Brahmins. Even in the Middle Ages, Maharaj Chandra Gupta was guided by learned Brahman Chanakya Pandit. In a, monar in a monarchy, one man sufficiently trained was competent enough to conduct alone the business of the state. But in a democracy, no one is trained like a prince. Instead, politicians are voted to responsible posts of administration by di diplomatic arguments. In place of one king or supreme executive officer, in a de democracy, there are so many quasi-kings. The president, the ministers, the deputy, deputy ministers, the secretaries, the assistant secretaries, the private secretaries, the undersecretaries, the PAs, and the MPs. There are, a number, there are a number of parties, political, social, and communal. And there are, and there are party whips, party whims, and so on. I don't know what that means. What's a party whip? But no one is well enough trained to look after the factual interests of the governed. In a so-called democratic government, Corruption is even more rampant than in an autocracy or monarchy. Men who want to flourish in the guise of servants of the people do not want a good king, king at the head of the state. They are like the kumud flowers, which do not take pleasure in the sunrise. The word ku means bad, and mood means pleasure. Persons who want to exploit the administrative power for their own self-interest do not like the presence of a good king. Although professing democracy, they want themselves to be kings. Thus they, complete, sorry, thus, they compete for votes by bad propaganda and take pleasure in having politics, but no king. Thieves and dacoits also take no pleasure in the presence of a good king. But it is, in the, but it is the interest of the people to have a well-trained king as the head of the state. After the new grains were cut and brought home from the paddy fields, the people began to observe the Navana ceremony everywhere in the presence of the Lord as Sri Krishna, in the presence of the Lord 
as Sri Krishna and Dave. Cool. This is a really fun picture. There's the Navanna ceremony. Look, there's, is that Brahma? It's a really beautiful picture, huh? We should always acknowledge the mercy of God. Wait, let me just see if there's any. Haribo, Shash Sharmaji, and Rukmini Didi. Okay, Prajuna Devi? It didn't look like a Devi. Anyways, yeah, okay. We should always acknowledge the mercy of God. We should not think that we can produce ample food grains merely with the help of tractors and fertilizers. These can help us only as instruments for such production. Without the sanction of the Lord, there is no possibility of having grains, even if there are trucks and fertilizers. When Lord Krishna and Baladeva present, the good men of Vrindavan realized that it was due to the presence of the Lord that their supply of food grains were sufficient. Some of the people of Vrindavan, including Krishna's father Nanda Maharaj, used to perform sacrifices to pro propitiate King Indra, the, God, the king of heaven, because he was the controller of the rains. Without good rains, grains could not be produced, and therefore the people would offer sacrifices to Indra. Lord Sri Krishna, however, stopped this age-old ceremony and advised his father to offer the same sacrifice to the Supreme Lord. His purpose was to teach that we need not satisfy the various demigods in charge of the various departments of cosmic affairs. Instead, we must offer sacrifices to the Supreme Lord, for the Lord is the master and all others are his servants. The famous Anukut ceremony performed in Vrindavan especially, and also in, other parts, in all other parts of India, was thus introduced by the Lord, and people still follow this path by worshipping Govardhan Hill, where the Lord used to take pleasure in tending the cows. People also worship Giri Govardhan as identical with the Lord, because there is no difference between God and his paraphernalia and pastimes. Okay, verse 46. Whoa, that's a very neat picture. Look at that ship. Okay, oops. Ah, okay. The merchants, preachers, kings, and students were confined to home during the four months, June, July, August, and September. So they confined to home during those four months. Um, wait. Sorry, sorry, I read this wrong. There should have been a comma here, right? The merchants, preachers, kings, and students who were confined to home during the four months, June, July, August, and September, began to flow out and attain success in life, just as perfected souls attain the required body as soon as they leave the present one. Okay, we're at the three last verses now. People in general, especially the merchants, preachers, kings, and students, are advised not to leave home during the four months of the rainy season. These four months are known as Chaturmasya. For everyone, and for everyone, there are specific rules for observing this period, partly for the sake of health and partly for spiritual realization. During this period, the merchants cannot do free business, Dedic dedicated souls like sannyasis cannot freely preach the doctrines of the Vedas. Kings cannot go out to tour their states, and students cannot go to their schools, which are closed. But after the Chaturmasa period, they all get the freedom to go out and perform their respective duties, and by doing so, they can achieve the results they desire. In the same way, one cannot achieve the desired results of one's penances until, one's until one attains freedom from the present body. There are various ways to practice the various kinds of yoga to attain various results in various spheres of life. It is not that everything is the same. There are varieties of life, varieties of planets, and varieties of success in spiritual realization. And all these can be achieved only when we have finished the Chaturmas-like period of life. 
It is a foolish imagination there that we can go to other planets in the present body. If we want to go to Devaloka, the planets of the demigods, we must achieve the required qualifications. And the same is true if we want to go back to the kingdom of God. If we want to remain on this planet in some better condition of life, that also will depend on the required achievements. In any case, those achievements can be fulfilled just after one leaves the body. The merchants, preachers, kings, and students form the four important sections of human society. The merchants should see that everyone gets his proper share of the food given as a gift by God. The sannyasi preachers should go from door to door to preach the sense of God consciousness, not to build mots and temples, but to enlighten the people. Interesting. <laughs> the king should go out from his home to see with his own eyes how things are going on. Maharaj Parikshit, while on tour, saw that, saw that a man, Kali, attempting to kill a cow, so the king at once punished him. And students should gather knowledge wherever it is available. The combined work of these four sections is meant for the general welfare of society. Um, Forty-seven. From the transcendence, which is called Krishna Loka, there emanates a glowing effulgence that resembles the tail of a comet. This glowing effulgence is unlimited, immeasurable, and unfathomable. Within this effulgence, there are innumerable glowing planets, each of them self-luminous. Somewhere, a limited part of that glowing effulgence is covered by material energy, just as a part of the sky is covered by a cloud. Within this material energy, there are innumerable universes. In every universe, there are innumerable material planets, and the Earth is one of these planets. Thus, we can understand what an insignificant part of the entire cosmos is, is this globe on which we live. <laughs> Krishna Loka, as above mentioned, is the residence of the personality of Godhead, the original transcendence. The glowing, of, the glowing effulgence emanating from Krishna Loka is the personal glow of the Lord. The Almighty Lord, being full of inconceivable energies, expands himself in various forms and energies. There are forms from his energy as well as forms from his, per from his person. He has innumerable energies, and therefore he can do anything and everything as he desires. And these things take place immediately with all perfection. His energies are like the heat and light that expand from a fire. The entire cosmic manifestation is nothing but an expansion of his energies. The energies are emanations from him, and therefore the emanations are simultaneously one with and different from him. Chinta Bheda Bheda Tattva Such a beautiful painting, huh? Is this supposed to be the material world down here? And then that's Vaikuntha, and then I think so. And then Krishna Loka. Transcendence is compared to milk, and the emanations are compared to curd. Curd is nothing but milk, but at the same time, it is different from milk. Curd is a milk preparation, but it cannot be used in place of milk. The Lord is also sometimes compared to a tree. The root of the tree is the cause of the trunk, branches, twigs, leaves, and fruits. Yet the trunk is not the fruit, and the fruit is not the leaf, nor is the leaf the root. When, the water, when, when water is needed, it has to be poured on the root, not on the leaves. Pouring water on the leaves serves no purpose, but pouring water on the root serves all purposes. This is the essence of the philosophy of spiritual culture. Krishna Loka is also called Goloka Vrindavan. Beneath this, oh, sorry, beneath this Goloka are Haridham, Mahesh, Maheshadham, and Devidham. Hari, Vishnu Narayan, is the formal expansion of the Lord. Mahesh, Shiva, is the formal energetic expansion of the Lord. And Devi is the Lord's energetic expansion. 
The living entities are also energetic expansions of the Lord. There are two different kinds of living entities, called the liberated souls and the conditioned souls. The planets within the glowing effulgence are called Hari Dham. On these planets, the predominating deity is Hari, and the predominated deities are the liberated souls. The features of the liberated soul and those of Hari are almost the same, yet Hari is the predominator and the liberated souls are predominated. The innumerable planets in Haridam are predominated by different formal expansions of the Lord, and all of them have different names. The universes within the material energy are called Devidam. And within Devidam, the predominating deity is Vishnu, who is assisted by Brahma and Shiva. Devidam is controlled by the three modes, namely goodness, passion, and ignorance. Vishnu is the incarnation of goodness, Brahma of passion, and Shiva of ignorance. Brahma creates, Vishnu maintains, and Shiva destroys the material creation. The material creation comes into being by the will of the Lord. And it is again annihilated by his will. But although the universes of the material energy are thus created and annihilated, the planets in Haridam are, never, are, are ever existent. The conditioned living entities who wish to enjoy and not serve are given a chance with, within Devi Dham to seek liberation. Some of them enter Hari Dham, and some of them enter Mahesh Dham, and some of them remain within Devi Dham. Mahesh Dham is the marginal place between Hari Dham and Devi Dham. The impersonalists who want to merge into the existence of the transcendence are placed within Mahesh Dham. Those who want to remain within the planetary systems of the material universes do so on various planets. But those who want to go outside the material energy and can enter Haridham and go either to the various planets there or directly to Krishna Loka. This system of Bhakti Yoga makes one eligible to enter Haridham. The system of Gyan Yoga makes one eligible to enter Maheshtam. And the symptom of Karma Yoga obliges one to remain in Devidham and repeatedly be born and die, changing his material covering according to the standard of karma he performs. Okay, we're on the last verse now. Haribo Champak Didi and Sudevi Didi and Gargurajji. So we'll finish this up and then we'll read some kata for Janmashtami. 48. The moon, or Chandraloka, is one of the four important places of residence for the demigods. Beyond Manasa Lake is Sumeru Mountain. On the eastern side of this mountain is the planet De Devodhani, where Indra resides. On the southern side is the planet known as Samyamani, where Yamaraj resides. On the western side is the planet known as Nimloch Nimlochati, the residence of Vayu, the demigod who controls the wind. And on the northern side, and on the northern side of the mountain is the moon, which is known as Vibhavari. All these various planets are with sorry, um, commentary. All these various planets are within the, uni within the universe in which are, sorry, all these, oh God, let me try a third time. All these various planets are within the universe in which our planet is situated. Persons who are too materialistic always engage in sense enjoyment. Such persons worship the material demigods and goddesses to fulfill their material desires. They are fond of performing many yagyas to propitiate the various demigods and the forefathers in heaven. Such persons are automatically promoted to the moon, where they enjoy soma, a celestial bev beverage. The moon is too cold for the inhabitants of this earth, and therefore ordinary persons who want to go there with earthly bodies are attempting to do so in vain. Merely seeing the moon from a distance of 80,000 miles cannot enable one to, under to understand the real situation of the moon. One has to cross the Manasa Lake and then Sumeru Mountain, and only then can one trace out the orbit of the moon. Besides that, no ordinary man is allowed to enter that planet. Even those admitted there, after death, must have performed the prescribed duties to satisfy the pitas and the devas. Yet even they are sent back to earth after a fixed duration of life on the moon.
Men with developed consciousness, therefore, do not waste time making excursions, real or imaginary, to the moon. Such intelligent persons do not endeavor to achieve temporary sense enjoyment. Rather, they apply their conserved energy for the sake of spiritual cultivation. They discharge religious duties for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord and not for personal sense enjoyment. The signs of such exceptional devotees of the Lord are that they are unattached to material enjoyment, contented, pure in heart, attached to, to, to devotional service, free from affection for temporary things, and devoid of false ego. According to Vedic injunctions, such great personalities ultimately attain the place where the Supreme Personality of Godhead predominates and where there is no death, no birth, no old age, and no disease. On the way to these spiritual planets, such personalities pass through the sun line called Archirmarg. And on the way, they can see all the planets between here and the spiritual world. Whoa. <laughs> All right, so that is the end. That's we've reached the end of uh, secret. What is it? Um, Light of Bhagavatam. And I'm just curious to know a little bit more about the uh, uh, artist. She's born in 1924. Okay, so three years after Gurudev, <laughs> her interest in painting began in early childhood. All right. Now she's dedicating much of her time to teaching students who are interested. In. Uh -huh. She's one of the few remaining masters of this art form of gong bi style. Okay. So now we're going to read about something for John Mashtami. Let me know if there's, if you have any recommendations. Um, wait, let me just check the comments if anybody has anything to recommend to read. Okay, so I'm gonna go to purebhakti.com. Mm, let's see. Also, yeah, I posted a couple things on vineofdevotion.com for John Rashtumi. Hmm, let's see what this is about. John Rashtumi glorification of Sri Radha, that's Gurudev's explanation on Mangala Gita, which Gurudev would always have us sing on John Rashtumi. Okay, let's check out what these all are. Okay, so there's one thing. I'm just checking this out really quick. These are explanations of kirtans. Uh, let's, let's see, a report of John Lashtami. Then, okay, so let's read this one. This is from 2nd September, 1999. Yeah, every, every year, um, for, for the longest time, for like 56, I don't know how long, but for um, my guru has been in uh, Mathura for Janmashtami for 56 years. He ob observes Janmashtami there. And on the day before Janmashtami, there would always be a big uh, parade. And so we do a big Nagar Sankirtan. We'd have all different kinds of, what do you call, floats. And uh, 
yeah, even yesterday they did to this day it's a huge procession on the Adivas Titi. And so then on Janmashtami Day in the morning, Srila Gurudev went to Janma Bhumi and later on we sang we all sang bhajans. And then Gurudev explained Dashavatar Stotram. Okay, let's see. In the morning, she, um, so this is Gurudev's explanation. Here, Keshava Dritta, this is the Vandana of Keshav himself. He is the one who dons the form of Matsya, the fish, for Leela purposes. How does he do that? By his Anksha Kala and in his original form of Rindranandan Sham Sundar, he only tastes so many mellows in Vraj. Do not think that Ram is different from Krishna. Mahaprabhu and all our acharyas did not see Ram as different to Krishna. In Srimad Bhagavatam, it is described that all Dashavatars are Krishna himself, although they could be his Anksha or Kala or Subkala. Today is the day of Sri Krishna Chandra. We are all doing um, we are all singing prayers to please him. But even more powerful is the Stav Stuti of his Priyaji, at Srimati Radhika. So we all pray to him on his appearance day. And Srila Gurudev reads a shlok. Um, Shama Sundara Shikanda Sheka Smera Hasa Murali Manohara Radhika Rasika Mam Kripa Nidhe Swa Priya Charanam Karim Kuru. That's from um, Vitalacharya. And it's O oh, Sham Sundar, one who wears the peacock feather, one who has a beautiful smiling face. Please give me this mercy. Please make me a particle of dust, a servant of a servant of your Priyaji's lotus feet. Should, maybe we should sing this. It's really nice. It's called Radha Prarthana. Let me just open it up. Uh, where is it? Here. Okay, let's just find it really quick. Um, Radha. There it is. So this is what we pray to Krishna. Gurudev is having us pray to Krishna on this Janmashtami day, this second verse here. Shama Sun. Okay, we uh, maybe yeah. I'll sing it really slowly, and then you can sing along. Shama Sundara Shikanda Shekara Smera Hasa Murali Manohara Radhika Rasika Mam Kripa Nidhe. Swapriya Charana King Karim Kuru. O Sham Sundar, O you whose head is adorned with peacock feathers, whose face is graced with a laughing smile, whose murali flute enchants the mind, and who are most expert in relishing ras with Shrimati Radhika. O Ocean of Mercy, please make me a kinkari, a maidservant at the feet of your beloved. So we pray to Krishna for what? Swapriya charana kinkarim kuru. To become a kinkari, a maidservant at the feet of your beloved. Prananata vrishabhanu nandini Shri mukabjara salola shatpada Radhika padatale krita stitting Twam pajami rasikendra shekara. You are the Lord of the life of the daughter of Rishabhanu Maharaj, and you are like a bee, always eager to taste the nectar of her lotus like face. O rasikendra shekara, foremost to those who are rasik, who are situated at the feet of Shimati Radhika, I worship. You. 
संविधाय दशने त्रिना विभो प्रार्थये व्रज महेंद्र नंदन अस्तु मोहन तवाति वल्लभा जन्म जन्मनि मरीश्वरी प्रिया O son of the king of Raj, O all, O all pervading one, O Mohan, who enchants the minds of all, taking a piece of straw in my teeth, I pray that your supremely beloved Sri Radha be my dear worshipful goddess, birth after birth. Okay, maybe we should just read the first verse also since we read everything else. Kripayati Adiradha, Badita Shesha Badha. If Sri Radha is merciful to me, then unlimited obstacles to my devotion will be removed. There will be nothing superior for me to attain because I, have, I will have received the excellence offered by the paths of both Vaidhi and Rag. And if she speaks something with, with, while smiling gently, thereby revealing the brilliance of the rose of her beautiful pearl-like teeth, what significance will the oyster of liberation have? So this is a prayer by Sri Vittalacharya. But these last three prayers here, this is what Krishna on this day. Praying to Krishna for Radha Dasya. All right, so let's go back to this article. Um, if you will please Krishna, he will give you this wealth. Today, you must not criticize any Vaishnav, even if his behavior is rude or bad. Krishna will punish him himself. Do not make fun of Vaishnavs. Always remain in satsanga where you'll get such teachings. Today in Kali Yuga, a pure Vaishnav guru and disciple is very hard to find. If you are not following the bhajan of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada, then how will you do bhajan? Then Gurudev asked the brahmacharis to recite uh, Brahma Samhita. And after the reading, after the recitation, Gurudev says, um, Brahma, Brahma, <laughs> sorry, this translation is really strange. Um, I know the person who translated it. It's not really, anyways. Ah, whatever, I'll just read it. Venum kvantam aravinda dalaya taksham Varhavatam samasitam buddha sundarangam Kandar pakoti kamani avishesha shobham Govinda madi purusham tamaham bhajami oh, oh, Krishna who is playing the Venu, who has lotus eyes, pitambar, beautiful limbs, one who reciprocates the same pav by which you do. Oh, God, it doesn't make any sense. One who reciprocates the same pav by which you do. Who's bhajan? Uh, maybe let's read something else. Yeah, let's, let's just because it's too difficult to read this. Um, one second, I'm just checking the comments. Okay. I'm just going to do one last thing. Maybe let's read from vcvani.com, which the Bhakti Vigyan Parati Goswami Maharaj said. And then, and then I'll stop for now, and then I will start reading from Dhammarashtakam. But I'll start a new video up to do that. So, Janmashtami. Okay, so we'll read this and then we'll stop. We'll finish. And if anybody wants, you can go to vineofdevotion.com and read these two articles here. The last John Mashtami discourse that my Gurudev gave in Delhi. That was actually like the last class I think my Gurudev ever gave. And also um, this 11 causes for Krishna's descent, which Gurudev spoke this class in Badger, California. 
And, um, yeah. And there's a video of him speaking it here also. If you click on it, it goes straight to the part where he starts talking about this. Why, why, Krishna, descended to this world? why did Krishna descend to this world? Why? See him. There's all these reasons. Because. First. Okay. So. August 19, 2022 is Janmashtami in Vrindavan, India. The following is an excerpt of a Bhavanubad discourse given by Srila Bhakti Vigyan Paratik on August 15, 2017. Let me put it in reader's view. How do I do that? There. Prostitution of words. Today is a special titi called Janmashtami. We sometimes specifically refer to it as Krishna Janmashtami, but simply by saying Janmashtami, it is understood to be Krishna's Janmashtami. Some refer to it as Krishna Jayanti. Nowadays, prostitution of words is prevalent, hence people attribute the word Jayanti to personalities other than Sri Krishna, the source of all avatars. For example, now there's Gandhi Jayanti, this Jayanti and that Jayanti, everything has become acceptable nowadays. Shri Srimad Bhakti Hridai Ban Goswami Maharaj elucidated on the matter in his article something to the effect of there is no other Jayanti other than Krishna Jayanti. <laughs> How can beginningless have a beginning? Now the question is which Krishna, Devaki Nandan Krishna or Nanda Nandan Krishna? Generally speaking, the scriptures mention that Krishna appeared in the prison of King Kangsa. If indeed Krishna appeared in the prison of Kangsa as a son of Vasudev, then why is he addressed as Nanda Nandan? Even the festival celebrating his birth is called Nandotsav, festival of Nanda Maharaj. It is not known as the festival of Vasudev or as Vasudevotsav. In this world, it is customary for the father to hold a festival when he is blessed with a son. However, it is mentioned in the Brahma Samhita, Ishvara Paramakrishna, Satchidananda Vigraha, Anadi Radir Govinda, Sarva Karana Karanam. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is Parameshwar. He is beginningless, Anadi, as well as the beginning, the Adi. He is Govinda, the cause of all causes, Sarva Karana Karanam. If he is the cause of all causes, then who could be his cause? I am not making casual statements. I am speaking Siddhanta. If he is the cause of all causes, how can he have a father and a mother? He cannot have parents, but the festival is known by the name Nandotsav. He is known as Nanda Nandan, and so on. What is the reason behind this? Whose son is Krishna? Bhagavan is nobody's son. Despite being Aja, unborn, Bhagavan accepts the pastime of being born. This is Bhagavan's supreme opulence, his Bhagavatata, his godhood. Krishna, Krishna, though unborn, accepts the pastime of birth because he is subservient to his devotee. Bhagavan becomes the son of one who has parental affection, Vatsalya, for him. It is said that because Nanda Maharaj has great affection for Bhagavan, Bhagavan is addressed as Nanda Nandan. Hence, the festival is called Nandotsav. Is it called Vasudev's Utsav? The term Janmashtami implies Krishna's birth when he he appeared, oh sorry, he appeared, was born in the house of Nanda Maharaj and merely descended of a taran holding a conch disc club and lotus before Vasudev and Devaki. Krishna is avatari, not avatar. My guru would always make this point with Dhamara Ashtakam. Sorry, with uh, Dash Avatar Stotram. Historically, it has been observed that the son of Vasudev appeared in the prison holding a conch, disc, club, and lotus in his four arms. And only after Devaki and Vasudev prayed for him to appear like an ordinary human child did he do so. First, he appeared in his transcendental, his alokic, four-armed four form, holding a conch, disc, club, and lotus. And then he turned into an ordinary human child. This is what has been revealed in the scriptures. Is this possible? Yes, everything is possible. Krishna is the avatari, the origin of all avatars or incarnations. He is not an avatar, so everything is possible. 
the merging of two Krishnas. From the external consideration, all his activities are transcendental. Vasudev took his birth, sorry, Vasudev took his child to the house of Nanda to hide him. On the way, Krishna fell in the Yamuna. Just then, the Yamuna began to flow backwards, and Vasudev was able to recover Krishna. Krishna did not drown. Yamuna not only gave way for Vasudev to cross over, but also rose right, but also rose high enough to touch Krishna's lotus feet. At the same time, twins, a son and a daughter, had been born to Yashoda. Vasudev brought back the girl child and left his Vasudev Nandan Krishna, who merged with Nanda Nandan Krishna. Is such a thing possible? That is why it is said, Janma Karma Chame Devyam. My birth and activities are transcendental. That's Bhagavad Gita 4 9. Like this, everything is transcendental. Our Goswamis unearthed the hidden meanings. How do they achieve this? They achieve this just by expanding upon the terms like Nandatmaja and Nanda Nandan. Compared to others, the Goswamis unearthed many Pramans, many evidences. Some Praman can be derived from every activity, every pastime. Narad Muni, lover of quarrels. Narad is known as Kalahapriya, lover of quarrels. He said to Vasudev, sorry, he said to Vasudev, when you get a son, you did not celebrate any festival. Now your son has become Dwarkadish, so celebrate a festival. Thus, a sacrifice was organized and performed, and all the three worlds were invited, with the exception of the Rajvasis. The responsibility of inviting all the guests was assigned to Narad, to Narad Muni. Being Kalahapriya, <laughs> liking loving quarrels, he first went to the house of Nanda Maharaj and Vraj and glorified him by calling out, All glories to Nanda Maharaj. There is a great sacrifice organized at Prabhas, and I have the responsibility to invite the residents of all the three worlds, with an exception of the Rajavasis. Nanda Maharaj became grave, but did not respond. Narad realized the objective of his visit was not being accomplished, so he proceeded to meet with Yashoda instead. Yashoda very affectionately received Narad. Oh, Narad, what can I feed you? Just let me know. I will prepare anything of your choice. Narad replied, I am very hard-pressed for time. I have to go and invite everyone in all the three worlds for the sacrifice being organized at Prabhas except for the Rajvasis. I have, I have come here only to inform you of this. <laughs> That's not nice. Okay. Yashoda announced, I will surely go, but not to meet with anyone. I will simply take darshan of my Lala, my dear son, and return. I will not even drink water there. What harm is, what, what is the harm in that? Nanda Maharaj, however, objected. Please do not go. It does not reflect well to go uninvited to such a grand organized sorry, to such a grandly organized and arranged sacrifice. But Yashoda insisted, I will surely go. So along with others, she went, but could not meet Krishna, as all the four entrances were guarded by gatekeepers. Moreover, Bhima and Arjuna were patrolling from their airplanes above. Nobody without an invitation could enter. Initially, they, the Rajvasis, repeatedly pleaded and even cried, but to no avail. By this pastime, it was proven that nothing will be achieved by prayers and weeping alone. One has to take shelter of Nam Kirtan. Nam Kirtan reigns supreme. One second, just keep on getting messages. Okay. Then Yashoda's maidservant suggested to her, O oh, Yashoda, please call out to your son by uttering his name. This pastime demonstrates how powerful Nam Kirtan is. When Yashoda performed Nam Kirtan by calling out, Gopal, Gopal, Krishna immediately left the sacrifice he was engaged in and came to Yashoda, seating himself on her lap in the form of Gopal. When the cowherd friends called out, Kanhaya, Kanhaya, having come all the, having come all the way here, Shall we return bereft of your darshan? 
Then Krishna went there in the form of Kanaya as their cowherd friends. Radharani also called out, O oh, Sham Sundar, will I not get your darshan? Will I have to return as it is? In response, Krishna went there in the form of Sham Sundar. Krishna reciprocated with each devotee according to his or her Priyanam, her name of Krishna that is most dear to the devotee, like Gopal Kanaya or Sham Sundar. Depending on the mood with which they called out to Krishna, he appeared to them in that very form. At the sacrifice, Narad Muni informed Devaki, Your son is being taken away by Yashoda. Please manage the situation. There were only five minutes left to complete the sacrifice, and if it was not completed, then it would be, then it would be fruitless. Yet Krishna did not mind. He simply got up and left. What was proven by this pastime? There is so much power in Nam Sankirtan that all fruit of activities such as this sacrifice were not given any precedence compared to Nam Kirtan. That is the point. Krishna's real mother. What a sweet picture. <laughs> Is Krishna the son of Yashoda or Devaki? How can we determine this? It was, a, uh, it was a judged that whoever's breast overflowed with milk out of Vatsalya upon seeing Krishna would be considered his real mother. Milk flowed from the breasts of Yashoda, not Devaki. So whose son is he? He is the son of Yashoda and Nanda. Therefore, the festival is called Nandotsav, Krishna Janmashtami. These are all very confidential subject matters, not easily understood. The confidential meaning. Regardless, Janmashtami and Nandotsav are celebrated in a grand way. You all consider this day as the festival of Janmashtami. Everyone uses these terms, Janmashtami, Janmashtami, Nandotsav, Nandotsav. Yet no one deliberates upon their confidential meaning. No one. Simply by, repeating, uh, simply by repeating, how does one come to believe that when Vasudev left, left his son Vasudev Krishna at Nanda Maharaja's house, he merged with Nanda Maharaja's son, Nanda Nandan Krishna? Is this worthy of being believed? This was proven when Akrura was sent by Kangsa to bring Krishna and Balaram to Mathura from Vrindavan to witness the Dhanur Yagya. Nanda Nandan Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. Turning to Mathura with them, when Akrura bathed at Akrura Ghat, he saw Krishna simultaneously seated on the chariot as well as in the, in, in the waters of Yamuna. When he took another dip, he saw the same vision again. Akrura wondered, This is not a reflection of Krishna, because if it were, because if it were so, it would, have, it would have to be upside down. To confirm, Krishna asked him, Did you see anything? Akura could not even reply. Through this pastime, Krishna showed that Nanda Nandan Krishna did not take even a step outside of Vrindavan at any time, and that there are two Krishnas, Vasudev Krishna and Nanda Nandan Krishna. Thus it is said, Krishna nyo yadusam bhuto ya puna sostata para vrindavanam parityaja Sa Kwachin Naiva Gachati. That's from Lagu Bhagavatamrita 15461. The Krishna known as Yadukumar is Vasudev Krishna. He is different from the Krishna who is the son of Nanda Maharaj. Yadukumar Krishna manifests his pastimes in the cities of Mathura and Dwarka. But Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj, never leaves Vrindavan at any time. Nanda Nandan Krishna never left Vrindavan. The difference is Devaki Nandan Krishna killed many demons, whereas Nanda Nandan Krishna did not kill any. This has been demonstrated, but to comprehend the transcendental activities of the Lord is very difficult. Everyone celebrates this. Uh, sorry, everyone celebrates the festival, yet they are not able to understand its confidential meaning. Okay, it's still Adivas there in, um, in, in America. All right, so um, now I, I'm going to 
I need to do a couple things right now. And then after what I'm planning to do is um, sing. Uh, you know, I've been singing. I've been going through the whole Goria Giti Gucha and singing. I'm singing all the songs in this Goria Giti Gucha. And I, yesterday I made it halfway through the Krishna songs in the Bengali section. And so I will go through and sing the rest of all the Krishna songs in here in the Bengali section. And I'll also sing all the Ashtakams for Radha and Krishna, um, which my Gurudev would do every Janmashtami Titi in Mathura early in the morning. It, he'd go through all the different Ashtakams and he would explain them, especially Mangala Gitam and Dashavatar Stotram, Radha Kripa Kataksha Savaraj, Nanda Nanda Nashtakam, and many other songs. So I will do that. Maybe I should do that soon. Yeah. And then I... Um, then I was thinking to read some uh, um, Dhammadarashtakam, which is one of my favorite books. And after that, um, maybe read some Benu Git. And yeah, so we'll just do lots of kirtan and reading all throughout the day today. And these books that I'm reading are books that I also have to be proofreading, like because we're going to be reprinting them. So I'm kind of doing two things at once. But uh, yeah, I hope you can join me in that. And um, Oh, Champak Didi is asking, what is the confidential meaning um, of the... I think he is just referring to the, the confidential pastime of, of um, Krishna actually being the son of Nanda, Nandan and, uh, of Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda Devi. And that Vasudev Krishna, you know, this whole pastime, the, what really happened, I think. But yeah. All right. So maybe I'll go live in like half an hour from now. So that means 9.15. Right now it's 8.45 and I'll go live at 9.15. All right. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Nitai Gaur, Hare Bol, Hare Bol, Hare Bol Nitai Gaur, Hare Bol, Nitai Gaur, Hare Bol, Hare Bol. Haribo Nitai Gaur, Haribo. On Champak Didi, yes, that is confidential. Um, like, you see, even in Srila Prabhupada's writings, like in the Krishna book and in, in places in the Srimad Bhagavatam, he refers to Vasudeva and, he's sorry, he refers to Nanda Baba and Yashoda Maya as Krishna's foster parents. So many, even many devotees, even many Gaudiya Vaishnavas don't know this, the, the fact of what actually happened, what the, the real story of Krishna's um, birth in Vrindavan and um, in Gokul, I mean. And also, um, but when, like we were, we've been reading Srila Prabhupada's purports and in some of the purports, Srila Prabhupada made it absolutely clear that Krishna was born in Vrindavan. And so um, like from Yashoda's womb, he gives evidence that um, like, like the evidence um, where it talks about, uh, what is it? Yoga Maya being Krishna's younger sister, Anuja. And, and anyways, he gives different evidence where, uh, so even Srila Prabhupada mentions that, but, but many places Srila Prabhupada also just refers to Nanda Baba and Yashoda as foster parents. So there's like different levels of understanding and the confidential deep level of understanding is this pastime. Hi. Jai Shishi Guru Guranga Gandharvika Giri Dhari Shishi Radha Vinod Bihari Juki Jai Shi Govana Gopinath Maran Mohan Juki Jai Nitil Pavishtam Vishnupa Rashata Rashata Shimar Bhakti Varanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Shri Guru Dev Ki Jai Nitil Pavishtam Vishnupa Shri Bhakti Varanta Vaman Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Nitil Pavishtam Vishnupa Shri Bhakti Varanta Swami Maharaj Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Nitil Pavishtam Vishnupa Shri Bhakti Bhagyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Nitila Pavishtam Vishupad Chila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Gosai Prabhupada Kijai Nitila Pavishta Maha Bhagavat Chilagor Shudas Babaji Maharaj Kijai 
Nitil the Pavisha shall such it around the Pakti Vino Takur Kijai. Nitil the Pavisha Vaishnav Sarva Pomash the Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj Kijai. She Rupanu Goria Guru Varga Kijai. She Rup Sanatan Pataragunath. She Jeev Gopal Patadashagunath Shargo Sai Pavu Kijai. She Surup Damadar Rai Ramanandari Shigor Parsha the Vrinda Kijai. Nama Chai Shlahiras Takur Kijai. Prem Sekoho Shi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunitan and the Shiadweta Gadadhar. Shivasri Gaur of Hakta Vrinda Kijai. Shikshetta Mandal Goramandal of Rajamandal Matura Vindavan Tam Kijai. Sarva Abhishta Bhadatta Giri Raj Maharaj ki jai, Shri Radha Kunda Shama Kun ki jai, Shri Amuna Devi Ganga Devi ki jai, Shri Tulsi Maharani Vrinda Devi ki jai, Shri Bhakti Devi ki jai, Shri Purnamasi Yoga Maya ki jai, Shri Gopeshwar Mahadev ki jai, Shri Harinam Sankirtan ki jai, Shri, uh, Shri Rajendra Nandan Sham Sundar, Shri Nanda Nandan Yashoda Nandan, Shri Krishna Chandra ki jai, Sadia Shubhat Avirbhav Titi ki jai, Krishna Janma Mahotsav ki jai, Shri Krishna Janmashtami Titi ki jai, Titi Palan Karibhakta Vrinda ki jai, Shri Nanda Baba ki jai, Shri Ashoda Maya ki jai, Shri Vasudev Maharaj ki jai, Shri Devaki Devi ki jai, Shri Dao Bhaya ki jai, Shri Raseshwari Vrishabhanu Nandini, Shri Mati Radha Thakurani ki jai, Sarva Rajavasi Gan ki jai, Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopi Gan ki jai, Shri Harinam Sankirtan ki jai, Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda ki jai, Samagata Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, Shinitai Gaur Primanande Hari Hari Bo. Vrindai Tulsi Devai, Priyai Keshava Shacha, Krishna Bhakti Pradadevi, Sattvatai Namona Maha, Vanchakal Patruvyashra, Kripa Sindhu Bhai Racha, Patitanam Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha. Pranams, everybody. So see you soon in a little less than half an hour from now. Um, 9.15 India time. And I will sing all the different Ashtakams and stuff. First I'll sing all the Ashtakams, then maybe we can go through the Bengali songs and then read some more from one of my favorite books. Yeah, I think it's like one of my all-time favorite books, Dhammadar Ashtakam. All right, Haribol, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Eddie Bolt.